Camping at a mid-Atlantic state park with my three kids had seemed like a great idea. The forest was lush and inviting, and the kids loved exploring the trails around our campsite. The park had well-marked paths leading from our site to the bathhouse, and we set up a buddy system for bathroom trips, emphasizing the importance of sticking together. The first day passed in a blur of activity. The kids ran through the forest, collected interesting rocks and leaves, and marveled at the wildlife. As the sun set, we gathered around the campfire, roasting marshmallows and sharing stories. The night was peaceful, the only sounds those of crickets and the occasional hoot of an owl. The next morning, we woke to a flurry of activity and concerned whispers among the other campers. A park ranger made the rounds, informing everyone about an incident during the night. Apparently, a woman had been bitten by a rattlesnake on the trail to the bathhouse and had been rushed to the hospital. The ranger warned us that it was rattlesnake breeding season, and the snakes were particularly active and numerous. A chill ran down my spine as I processed the information. The very trails my kids had happily wandered were now teeming with hidden dangers. Rattlesnakes were known to be elusive and well camouflaged, making them difficult to spot until it was too late. I couldn't help but think about how easily one of my kids could have encountered a snake during their explorations or trips to the bathroom. We gathered around the campsite, and I emphasized the importance of staying close and vigilant. The carefree atmosphere of the previous day was replaced with a heightened sense of caution. Every rustle in the underbrush made us jumpy, and the once inviting forest now seemed fraught with hidden threats. Despite the fear, we tried to enjoy the remainder of our trip. The kids played games close to the campsite, avoiding the trails altogether. We spent more time at the picnic area and by the lake, where the ground was clear and the visibility better. The experience had changed the mood of our trip, but we made the best of it, finding safer ways to enjoy our time together. When we finally packed up to leave, the relief was palpable. The beauty of the park was undeniable, but the lurking danger had cast a long shadow over our stay. As we drove away, I couldn't help but reflect on how quickly a seemingly perfect trip could turn into a nightmare. The memory of that woman's encounter with the rattlesnake served as a stark reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the importance of always being prepared for the unexpected. The Yukon River is both majestic and unforgiving. Our five-day, 150-mile canoe camping trip began at the south end of Lake LaBerge, with the rule to stay within 100 yards of shore, safety first, since the water could freeze you to death in 20 minutes if you capsized. The first day and a half were brutal with relentless wind, throwing us off schedule. We fought against the gusts, paddling with all our might, but progress was slow. Our muscles ached, and we were already behind by the time we set up camp that first night. As we tried to rest, the wind howled through the trees, making sleep difficult. We hoped the next day would be kinder. By noon on the second day, the wind finally died down, leaving the water as smooth as glass. It was a relief to paddle without the constant resistance. We saw an opportunity to make up time by cutting between some peninsulas. Confident and eager, we paddled out, soon finding ourselves half a mile from shore. Out of nowhere, dark clouds gathered on the horizon. The air grew heavy, and a storm rolled in with alarming speed. The wind picked up again, fiercer than before, whipping up two to three foot waves that tossed our canoe. Lightning flashed across the sky, and the thunder boomed, echoing off the water. Panic set in, but we knew the only way to avoid capsizing was to face the waves head on. We turned the canoe into the waves, each of us paddling with every ounce of strength we had. Water splashed over the sides, drenching us. The cold bit through our clothes, and our muscles screamed in protest. It was a battle just to keep our position, let alone move forward. Every stroke was a fight against the storm, against the fear of freezing if we went into the water. For forty-five minutes, we battled the storm, muscles burning, 
water splashing over the sides, and the thunder roaring above us. It felt like an eternity, the fear of capsizing and freezing driving us to keep going despite the exhaustion. The shore seemed impossibly far, a distant, unreachable safety. Finally, the wind began to relent. We seized the moment, paddling with every ounce of strength left in us, making slow but steady progress toward the shore. As we reached it, we scrambled out of the canoe, dragging it onto solid ground. We quickly set up an improvised shelter, shivering from both the cold and the adrenaline. Huddled together, we listened to the storm rage on, grateful to be on land. The forty-five minutes in the storm were the most terrifying of my life, a stark reminder of nature's power and our vulnerability. That night, as the wind howled outside, I couldn't help but feel a deep respect for the river and a profound sense of relief that we had made it through. The rest of the trip, though challenging, was nothing compared to that harrowing ordeal on Lake LaBerge. The storm eventually passed, leaving the lake eerily calm again. We took the opportunity to rest, our bodies aching from the exertion. The fear from those moments on the lake lingered, a stark reminder of how quickly things could turn dangerous in the wild. The rest of the trip, though challenging, felt like a gift after surviving that storm. We continued our journey, staying close to the shore as we had originally planned. Each night, we set up camp with a new appreciation for the solid ground beneath us. The Yukon River, with its breathtaking beauty, held a respect we hadn't fully understood before. We paddled through stunning landscapes, under clear skies and star-filled nights, each day bringing us closer to our destination. By the time we reached the end of our trip, we were exhausted but grateful. The journey had tested us in ways we hadn't expected, but it had also given us a deeper connection to the wilderness. The storm on Lake LaBerge was a reminder of nature's unpredictability and power, a lesson we would carry with us long after we left the Yukon behind. The memory of those forty-five minutes in the storm stayed with me, a vivid reminder of how small we are in the face of nature's might. It was the scariest forty-five minutes of my life, but it also taught me a profound respect for the wild and an appreciation for the moments of calm that followed. The Yukon River trip was more than just a journey. It was a testament to the strength and resilience found in the heart of the wilderness. The scariest thing that ever happened to me while camping was the last year my mom took us out. I was around eleven. We had a truck bed camper that we'd slid out of the bed, so it stood on metal leg stands, giving it a somewhat precarious feel. That night, a storm kicked up, shaking our little camper with its fierce winds. I woke up in the middle of the night to find my mom sitting silently on her bed, looking worried and intense. Her eyes were fixed on the darkness outside the small window. I could hear the wind howling, and something about the sound felt wrong, more menacing than any storm I'd experienced before. I sat up and listened closely. Mom, is it a tornado? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. She nodded, her face pale, and we sat there in silence, straining to hear over the roar of the wind. It sounded like a freight train, a low, constant rumble that grew louder and louder, shaking the camper on its flimsy stands. The minutes stretched on forever as we waited, hearts pounding. The camper swayed, and I feared it would tip over. The sound of the tornado was so loud, so close, that it felt like it was right on top of us. I held my breath, clutching the edge of my bed, feeling utterly powerless. Eventually, the roar began to fade, and the wind started to die down. The storm passed, leaving an eerie silence in its wake. We waited a bit longer, making sure it was truly over before venturing outside to assess the damage. The campground was a mess. Smaller trailers had been knocked over, debris scattered everywhere. The troop of Girl Scouts camping nearby had a terrifying experience. The tornado had hit their camp, lifting their tents about three to five feet off the ground before dropping them back down, leaving the tents collapsed in a heap. The girls, shaken and scared, had spent the rest of the night in the campground bathroom. 
Fortunately, it was a sizable bathroom with multiple stalls and showers, so they could all fit. The morning light revealed the full extent of the damage, but also brought relief. No one was seriously hurt, and we were all grateful for that. As we packed up to leave, I couldn't shake the fear and awe I felt. The power of the storm, the helplessness we felt, it all stayed with me. That was the last camping trip we took for a long time. The memory of that night, sitting in the dark, listening to the sound of the tornado, is something I'll never forget. It taught me a deep respect for nature's power and a keen awareness of how vulnerable we are in its path. Working in Yellowstone had made me accustomed to wild tales, but nothing prepared me for that summer of 2013 when my girlfriend and I decided to camp outside Cook City. We chose a campground where three years earlier, a bear had attacked and tragically killed someone. Despite my nerves, we ventured out, hoping for a peaceful night under the stars. After dinner in Cook City, I asked our waiter about the infamous bear attack. He confirmed the chilling details, sending a shiver down my spine as we headed back to our tent. With bear spray by my girlfriend's side and a softball bat by mine, we settled in for the night, wary of every rustle in the darkness. In the dead of night, nature called, and I reluctantly considered leaving the safety of our tent. That's when I heard it, a massive animal crossing the nearby stream. Adrenaline surged as I strained to listen. The steps drew closer, and I reached for the bear spray, waking my girlfriend in the process. Silencing her, I motioned for silence as the steps circled our campsite. A strange thud accompanied the footsteps, unnerving us further. Summoning courage, we cautiously unzipped the tent fly. Bathed in the moonlight, a bull elk and a doe greeted our eyes. The bull, unfazed by our presence, repeatedly picked up and dropped a rock creating the eerie thuds. It was both mesmerizing and terrifying, a reminder of nature's raw power and unpredictability. Despite the relief that it wasn't a bear, the experience left a lasting impression. I've always been uneasy camping in grisly territory, but that night with the elk remains one of the strangest and most memorable encounters of my life.